Good morning, people. Welcome to another Slow Glow. So it's a little bonus class to make up for yesterday's not happening, uh, because sometimes in Bali we have problems with our internet, and I couldn't get online. <sighs> and I wanted to record something chilled out and a bit shorter than the one we've got up at the moment, because it's, it's a bit too long, that one. You'll notice I'm sitting on a block, and I've got a couple of cushions with me this morning. Um, in this class, we try to make it really, really accessible and comfortable while still, you know, developing a little bit of strength and flexibility as well and tuning into the breath. But we might want our cushions for comfort or to raise us up a little bit. So with that said, find a comfortable cross-legged seat. Now this could be, you know, the legs could be out here. We could go straight to propping knees. Um, or, you know, maybe we've got a, a cross leg like this and a knee that floats up and we just soften the, take the effort out of the leg with our props. So again, it could be like this. What I'm looking for here is that the legs feel heavy. I'm not trying to push the leg down. The leg is flopped out of the socket, pressing down onto the props. Or if it feels okay in your body this morning, we could just cross the legs. Now, feel into your seat, into your sitting bones. I can see that I'm a little bit off to one side, or I can feel it. We want to feel that the weight is coming down to both sides of the pelvis equally. And from this steady base with the weight on the block, on the pelvis and the legs heavy, we start to draw the spine up, finding the natural S curve or the natural configuration of our spine. A head sitting on top. Maybe we're drawing the chin back a little bit. And did we feel that the lower back maybe collapsed or tightened when we drew the chin back? Fingertips to the knees. And we just gently rock the pelvis back and forth until we feel this best, uh, best compromise between the head coming up, tummy not collapsing, and the back feeling upright and engaged but not overworked. And trust me, learning to sit well when we've spent our whole lives not developing our core, slumping in chairs, driving cars for hours. It's not easy to learn to sit well, not at all. Um, but uh, the oldest text of yoga is Patanjali's Yoga Sutras, the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali, or Patanjali. And um, he doesn't talk really at all about the physical practice that we have today. Mainly it's a spiritual and philosophical practice, the science of spirituality almost, um, and with a goal very similar to Buddhism or release from a cycle of reincarnation, attainment of a higher state of being. This is about 2,000 years old, give or take, two, three hundred years. We don't really know. We don't even know if it was one person, but I digress. What he says about asana is, established in asana, we come to sit. And that's maybe slightly paraphrased, but that's, that's the essence of it, which is effectively that we train the body through the asana, through the physical poses, to be able to take our seat and engage in meditation with a healthy, strong spine and a body free of pain. So it's no small thing to learn to sit. And uh, it's something I will talk about more in future classes. 
For now, let's close down the eyes. And if you find your posture has gone a little bit, that's okay, don't worry about it. Just make little micro adjustments. You're trying to find the balance between thinking, oh no, I'm not sitting right. Oh, what if this is wrong? And just going, oh yeah, my tummy's gone again a little bit. I'm just going to draw up again. That's this balance. And as we uh, sit, I'll try to clear the mind of other sub subjects and bring the attention to the breath. Breathing through the nose, if that's comfortable for you this morning. In and out through the nose. And as the breath is coming in, you're concentrating. I'm inhaling. I'm exhaling. I'm inhaling. I'm exhaling. And then maybe we can drop the I. Inhaling. Noticing a state of inhalation. Exhaling. When other thoughts come in, just bat them to the side. A story, let it go. A plan, let it go. Just little bubbles of thoughts and you just throw them to one side or the other. Inhaling. Exhaling. Inhaling. Exhaling. Checking in with the posture. Do you need to rock the hips forward or back slightly? Take a deeper breath and fill the whole body. And we'll sigh it out with a big sigh. Ah. Once more. <sighs> Flutter open the eyes. And let's get those shoulders moving. Just gently at first. If you're doing this early in the morning especially, there might be some stiffness here. If there's any injuries, if there's any arthritis or other pains in the joints. My fingertips could be on the knees or on the shoulders. See how that affects the movement. There's no right or wrong here. Go the other way. Nice, maybe you get a little bit faster. And as you come back, see if you can feel the shoulder blades drawing together. And without overstraining, see if you can draw them a little closer together. Let's go the other way again. Let's slow it down as we come down. Just squeezing those shoulder blades together. Enough that you're making an effort and not so much that it hurts or you tense up through the neck or the jaw. Try to just keep the shoulders moving. The tummy's drawing in a little bit to keep us stable. Drawing the shoulder blades down on the back. We might synchronize this with the breath. So we could inhale up. And we could exhale. Squeezing those shoulder blades, dragging them down the back. Building some mobility here. And we're also, if we speed it up again, developing some heat. And... We use both fast and slow movements in yoga. Yoga can be very physical. And sometimes the slow movements are the most physical. Let it go, stretch the arms out. Try to have them level with the shots. Moving from one position to another with control 
usually takes more muscles than uh, diving forwards. Lower the hands. Inhale the hands up. Exhale the hands to prayer. Close the eyes down. Tuck the chin. We'll chant Om together once. Breathing out, taking a deep breath in for Om. Blink open the eyes and nice and gently, let's come off our prop if we're sitting on a prop. And we'll put that to one side to use later. Tidy these cushions out of the way. And um, we're going to come onto all fours. Now, one thing a lot of people find when they start pa practicing yoga or when they've been practicing perhaps a little carelessly or a little too much is the wrists can get quite sore. If you're not used to being on your hands and knees, and many adults aren't, uh, even this static pose might be a little taxing on the wrist. So I share a couple of things here. Firstly, the hand position. We want our hand to be really nicely spread out, so fanning the fingers out. And then the index finger is facing forwards and the thumb. Uh, if the index finger is at is 12, then the thumb is at 10 o'clock. And over on my left hand, it's at midday and two o'clock. And I'm spreading the other three fingers out as wide as I can. So it's a big wide base. This helps with balance as well. Spreading the weight out. The other thing is that we flatten the hand onto the floor and we squeeze a little bit through the fingertips. This activates all the muscles in the forearms. And it helps us to uh, make the most use of what we've got in the arms and the wrists will get less tired. <coughs> Finally, we're going to try to rotate the eyes of the elbows, the hinge of the elbow, forwards. So we roll the biceps towards the front and the triceps towards the back. So if I bend my elbows, my elbows come backwards towards my knees. Now this is usually where we want the arms in yoga. For our yoga push-up, for our downward dog, and for many other poses we don't need to worry about right now. Right from the beginning, we want the habit of getting those elbows back, facing towards the knees, facing towards the back of the room, the mat. So we've got a nice hand position there. And you'll notice as well that the shoulders uh, come above the wrists. So in addition to making best use of our muscles, we're making best use of our skeleton transferring the weight all the way down into the ground through the bones, these big chunky uh, structures are designed to take it. If we're not quite in the right place, we're putting pressure into the joint instead. If we don't have the muscle to support that joint, we might strain something. Our foundations, you know, just like when you're playing a musical instrument, um, and the parallels with yoga and playing musical instrument are enormous. If you're tired, send the bum back for a second, come forwards again. Um, we want to start off with good technique, good placement. We want to know where the most efficient place to have our hands and our feet is uh, and, and to really have that drilled in. So when we come to do more complicated things, let's bounce a little forwards and back here. Toes tucked. When we come to do more complicated stuff down the line, we always have this solid foundation. Our elbows aren't flying out. We haven't weakened joints and we've built the appropriate muscles for stabilize, stabilizing ourselves in our yoga postures. Excellent. So we'll change this up just a little bit. When we come back like this, we send the bum towards the heels often with the toes untucked. This is child's pose. There's several variations of child's pose, but in the main, 
when we are down on the heels or sometimes with the knees wide and the forehead is coming towards the mat, we're curling up a little ball, that's child's pose. And that's our kind of uh, recovery pose, our safety pose in our yoga practice. Not only does it feel lovely, it's a good way to let your teacher know, I need a rest. My, And the way you know you need a rest is, you know you need a rest. Anytime you need a rest, you take a rest. We're meant to, we're hoping to develop our bodies a little bit. We don't do that by overstressing the body. If the heart rate is high and it feels uncomfortable, we take a rest. Also, if the breath, if we're, <laughs> we're not meant to be there in yoga, you know, we're not looking for that level of stress on the body. Um, that won't help you develop flexibility because the muscles will go into defense mode. So if we lose the breath, um, if the heart rate's too high, we feel dizzy, anything like that, or something just feels a bit too hard, child's pose. Now, if my head doesn't reach the mat and I haven't got my block here, I stack my fists, forehead there, and now my weight is on the heels. I don't want the bum up in the air like this. That's not really helping anything. In fact, that's quite hard work on the thighs. If we've got our block, so we can start here, the bum is nicely on the heels, and we try to find the block with the forehead. And then hopefully we feel that this tissue here, these muscles on the along the base of the spine, go, oh yeah, and they soften off a bit. And if they feel like they've got a bit more to give, we can lower the block. And we may even find over the course of a few breaths that the forehead wants to come all the way down. So it's okay to start on a prop and reduce the amount of support as we go. It's also a nice way to keep track of your progress. Oh, I used to need two blocks for this. So never be afraid to give yourself a helping hand. Um, and of course, if you haven't got one of these yet, a nice big book, you know, anything like that would be great. So we're going to move a little bit. Coming back to our all fours position from our happy baby, you'll notice I tuck my toes again. And these toes are pushing into the ground. It's like I'm springing off like a runner in the, in the, in the blocks. So I've got this spring coming from my toes there. Um, and that's going to drive this whole movement. And we energize through the feet. Maybe we feel something happening here as well. And it kind of switches everything on. So we're going to come back and I'm going to say lift from the tummy. It's one of these sort of things we say in yoga. It might seem a bit weird at first. Lift from the tummy. And I'm sort of pushing with the feet. So I'm sucking the tummy in. I'm breathing in. And I'm kind of floating. I'm trying not to dump into my hands. I'm trying to float. And when I get all the way to so my shoulders are back above my wrists, I'm still breathing in here. I'm really slowing this down for you. Sticking the bum up. I'm lifting the shoulders. I'm lifting the head. And this is our cow position. I'm still pushing off the toes. I'm going to start breathing out and I'm going to roll my hips. And I'm going to roll the spine up into a big arch like this. Exhaling, pushing away. Inhaling. Exhaling. And if you've done this a million times, you're thinking, why is he making such a meal of it? Slow it down a bit more. Lift from the tummy a bit more. Get lighter in your hands. We've always, always, always got a little bit more to find, even in the most basic of shapes. And you'll see this movement in every physiotherapist's office. Every uh, aerobics or gymnastics studio, whether they're old school or new school, this just works. I think it's 22 vertebrae we have, and they get a bit bunged up. They're all connected by so many different muscles, do slightly different things. We need to get them moving. 
And the next kind of movement we're going to take is we're going to take a sort of a, a rotational movement. So your own version of this, and it's like your spine is a, is a string attached at your tailbone and between your shoulders, and you're just going to try and spin it around. And the head might move with that. We try to keep the hips fairly still. It's not possible, but I shouldn't think, to keep them completely still. You can uh, send me a message and tell me if it is, if I'm wrong. Um, but the head might move opposite to the spine. Take it the other way if you haven't. And just rotating the spine. We get a nice twist. And then cut back to say, and just give the head a little shake. Try and make the cheeks really, really floppy. So often we've got a boatload of tension in that face, especially when we're practicing yoga and it's a bit tricky. I like to just give the face a little shake. Okay, so I'm coming up to kneel now. This might not be comfortable for you. My toes are tucked, your toes might be flat. Or again, if we're struggling a little bit to be up there, maybe we've got a cushion here. Um, we're going to do, take some neck circles. Now, this is one to keep going with for a few weeks. Um, so start small. The benefits come with this, we're not overdoing it. And it's very simple. You drop the chin towards the chest, as low as it comes without hurting. And then inhaling, we drag the chin across the chest, or the best version that we can, over to the right shoulder. And we keep on inhaling all the way up until the middle. And we've got the chin up in the air. And as we exhale, we're turning over to the right, dropping the chin down, and drawing it back to the center. So all of us are going to have a different uh, range in the spine. Uh, this morning doing that and um, so find your level if you repeat this every few days you'll find you can go further and further with it so dropping that chin down we're going to go the other way so inhale it over to the left dragging the chin over to the left keep going with the inhale and it's like we're drawing a big oval with the chin try to start the movement with the chin and we're exhaling down to the right shoulder and back now in your own time Alternating directions, inhaling, bringing the chin across the chest, drawing this big oval down the other side, inhaling left, and exhaling it back to the middle. One more each side, dragging the chin across the chest, nice big oval. Last side. Mm. Yeah, so I'll just say one more time. Avoid the temptation to throw the neck back. Find the comfortable edge and repeat it regularly. And it really works. Okay. So we're going to do a little bit more of this. I want this slow uh, glow this morning to be a quite a lot about joint maintenance. Um, it's so often overlooked, but what do we want? We want a happy body through our whole lives, and that's looking after joints. So we're going to come to our fingers next, and we're just flicking the fingers up. Thumbs, mid, first finger, middle finger, ring finger, little guy. And again, thumbs, first finger, middle finger, ring finger, little guy. Wiggling them all out. Good wriggle and a scrunch. And you float those wrists away. Put the arms up and down while we're doing this. Say hello to the shoulders and bring them back in. Interlace the fingers and keep the wrists quite far apart, the forearms parallel, and drive this from the elbows. So it's like the elbows are riding a bike. The wrists are really, really floppy. And we're just moving the synovial fluid through the joints, other way, waking up those joints. Fantastic. Now this next bit is one you probably want your um, block for. If you've got your block or a book, 
you could use the edge of the sofa, you can do it on the door frame. What we want is you want something solid though for this. You do want something solid to rest against because we want to be able to hold our wrist down. So yeah, maybe the arms of the sofa would do quite nicely there. Um, or yeah, or a book. Now, while you, I'll do the blurb while you guys are looking for something there. So when we, um, our hands very, very, very mobile things, right? Now, a lot of that movement comes from the wrist. Some of the movement comes from the elbow because we've got two bones here joining to the elbow. Mm -hmm. In this motion, we just want to move the wrist. So we put the wrist on something solid and we bring the other hand on top to immobilize it so that we know we're just moving the wrist. And it's very simple circles. Extend the hand down as much as you can so it's a little bit uncomfortable. And then slow circles. Slow cycles, keeping the fingers really extended. That's it. And it's just like the neck. We're just pushing to the edge of discomfort here. Let's go the other way. So sort of five or six of these circles on each side, nice and slow, really deep in there. And again, over a few weeks, you'll see quite amazing results on doing these. Turn the hand over. And do a few the other way. So these are little tools you can put in your morning and you go, oh, my wrists have been killing me recently. Other way. And you take this for five minutes every morning. I think you order good. Let's come to the other hand. So first palm up, down. You can imagine there's a whole set of these for the whole body, but it would take the whole class. So we're not going to do them. We're just going to do this uh, wrist and neck stuff. Other way. When you've done your five or six each side, we're turning the hand over. Very really nice. Also, when you've really got this locked in and you know what's going on in the body with it, you can just bring the arms right in like this and energize, and you can practice it like this. But when you're getting used to it, it's better to prop. So you really know you're just moving that wrist. Fantastic. Let's give the uh, little wrist bicycle another go there, just in case any tension got in. Excellent. Put the prop to one side if it's in your way. Uh, yeah, and let's interlink the uh, fingers behind the back. Roll the shoulders back a little. And just gently, gently, gently lifting the hands away from the back. Okay, no strain here. It might be a very small movement. Let's see if we can draw the stomach in. So as you exhale, draw the belly button back towards the spine. As we inhale, can we get a little bit taller while holding that? Exhale. Inhale. Release the hands. Let's come down to... Um, sit on the bum. So you might sit on a block at this point if you want to. <laughs> Inhale those arms up above. Taking just a simple twist over to the right. Left hand to right knee. In and it up. Ah, nice sigh. See if you can bring the attention to each one of the vertebrae. And imagine that they're all tied to each other with little shoelaces, which is kind of how it works. We might soften off each shoelace with the breath. Inhale it back through to the center, the hands high. And on your exhale, we're twisting to the left. Maybe the back of the hand comes to the thigh. And as you open the shoulder, you find a little depth there. Maybe it doesn't reach and the hand's just on the thigh. Ah, lovely sigh. We're still working in the tummy here, not collapsing into the spine. Inhaling back to center. The right hand down, inhale, left hand over for our side stretch. Now I'm quite flexible, so I can come quite low. We might be here, that's okay. We don't want any excess tension coming into the neck. Maybe as we breathe out, we can come a little lower. For some of us, 
Maybe we can find the elbow is on the floor. And even though we're lengthening this flesh here, what's happening on this side of the body? Are we squashing the spine here? Can we lift out of the spine on the right, even as we open the left? Inhaling, lifting from here, coming straight over on the exhale. All of the work in the core or as much as possible. There's another thing to think about when you're choosing how deep to come. Can I lift up or am I collapsed? I try to build strength and integrity around the joints, developing this core power. Opening the right side of the body, feeling this lovely spread around the ribs. Lots of energy through the core. We're inhaling to center. Look at those fingers a wiggle. Give those wrists another wiggle. And then let's come over to our all fours again. Tucking those toes. And again, flowing, waving through the spine. Inhaling, lifting from the tummy, arching, exhale, elbows back, bum back. Inhaling, exhaling, start the movement in the pelvis. Inhaling forwards, exhaling back. When you come back the next time, energy through your hands and feet. We're slowly lifting into our version of Downward Dog this morning. The knees are nice and soft here. If the hands feel like they're doing too much of the work, we want a 50-50 weight distribution. Bend the knees a little more. And then just lift your head, if assuming that's comfortable, and check with your hands. Are those index fingers pointing forwards? Could you rotate the elbows back so they're pointing behind you a little more? The biceps coming more to the ceiling. Can we root the shoulders in the sockets? Whilst the crown of the head reaches towards the thumbs, the tailbone reaches towards the back of the room. Maybe the spine gets longer. And I don't want you to worry about a straight knee or a foot on the ground. But see if you can move the heels away from the pelvis. See if you can become longer between the back of the knee and the top of the thigh. Check in with the shoulders. Check in with the tummy. Gently bend the knees, lowering the knees all the way to the mat. Untuck the toes. Child's pose. So again, we're getting used, finding our edge, staying at our edge, and knowing when to rest. And developing these instincts will keep us safe when we come to a stronger practice. Tucking those toes. So my feet and my hands feel like they want to escape from each other and the tension lifts the hips. Big breath out. Maybe a horse breath, flapping the lips. Using this noisy exhale to expel tension. And we're pedaling the heels. We're raising one heel and the other heel. Walking the dog. Maybe next time you lift the right heel, it might come off the floor. Maybe the knee comes out to the side a little bit. Maybe it comes back to the mat. So inhale the left knee out to the side. Doesn't matter what it looks like. I want you to think about the shoulders staying still. I want you to think about the supporting leg, the right leg staying still. Lower that left leg back down. This time we're going backwards. Pick up that right heel and think you're pushing a box away behind you. You just want to slide that box back into the shelf. Let's take a few reps like this. And again, the focus is not what we look like. What are the hands doing? What's the leg doing? Is my tummy dropped? Draw the tummy in. Root the hands. Root the left leg. Plant the right foot back down. Left heel up. Pushing that box, pushing the box back under the shelf. Maybe you're tidying up your clothes, 
doing your yoga at the same time, just tidying. And I'm moving my heel away. And my heel goes back, tummy engages, and my knee just comes along for the right. So I'm not overtaxing the knee. Put that foot back down. I have a little wiggle here, dropping the heels from side to side. How are your wrists doing? The wrists getting sore? Take a rest. Try just moving the hand position. Spread the fingers a little more. Squeeze the mat. Squeeze into the mat. And let's take our little wiggle for a walk. And we'll wiggle our way towards our hands. So sliding a foot forward, sliding the heels. It's a little twisty dance coming towards the hands. And now my feet are about a fist width apart as I come to the top of the mat and my second toes are facing forwards. My body is heavy. So you'll see um, some types of yoga, the feet are together, the knees are straining back and we're squeezing the body down. You know, and it's all about how straight are you, how low are you. It's not necessarily very good for us or very fun. Could be, but it's not necessarily so. Um, so we've got our feet a little bit apart. If you hang from a bar, you'll find your feet hanging a little bit apart. And we're going to call this pose not a front fold. We're going to call it a belly to thighs pose. So bending the knees until the body is heavy on the thighs. Maybe we let the head go a little bit. The head's heavy. And feel into your feet. Imagine you don't have any toes for a moment. Maybe pick your toes up. And the bottom of your foot, imagine it has four corners. Of course, it's all round curves. But imagine it has four corners at the heel and front of the foot. So we've got eight points of contact with the ground. And we'd like all of them to have exactly the same amount of weight on them. You might need to turn the feet in very slightly or out very slightly as you start to spread all, I mean, there's so many bones in the foot. Spread the bones of the foot out and balance that weight on them. Drop the head a bit more. Maybe if you're ready, you plant the fingertips, inhale, lift the body a little bit. Exhale, drop the body back onto the thighs, caterpillaring a little further along the leg. Really, really nice and soft here. Bring the weight just slightly forwards and see if you feel the weight of the torso tipping out of the pelvis a little bit, that lengthening. And now we're going to come up. So now we're going to bring the weight back. So we're bringing the weight over the heels. And the head is still heavy as we inhale and we lift from the tummy. Arms feel like they're full of wet sand and we're slowly rolling up. Trying to adjust the weight and keep centered over the feet as we come up. Incredibly slowly. And those heavy arms now light, floating up, floating up, floating up. Stretch. Maybe come onto the tiptoes. I had to open my eyes then. Up onto the tiptoes. Exhale, soft hands like you're brushing a curtain with your fingertips, bending the knees, a little squat. And we're lifting the wrists. And we're dragging the fingers down the curtain. Send the bum back a little bit. Exhale, tucking the tummy, rolling back onto the thighs. Inhale, lift the body up. Now here, a lot of people prioritize the fingers on the floor. For me, I prioritize a happy back. Nice flat back. So bring the fingertips to the shins. So you really know you've got a flat lower back. Lift up, lift up, lift up. Let's come up a little bit. There we go. We've got a nice flat back. Exhale the fingertips to the floor. Bend the knees. Set the right foot back. Step the left foot back. I'm finding a plank shape. Drop the knees. Exhale the bum back to the heels. Inhale, rounding forwards. As we come forwards, bending the elbows. Elbows going backwards, 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 backwards. And we're down on the ground. Untuck the toes. You can take a little baby cobra. 
So a little back bend. So we're just inhaling. The fingers are very light on the floor. Maybe the fingers come off the floor. Exhale it back down. Two more. Little baby cobra. Tops of the feet drag you back and up. They provide the strength. The hips push into the ground. They're floating. Exhale it back down. If you're feeling brave, maybe lift the feet up. Inhale, our third little back bend. Hands and feet floating off the floor. Hold. Exhale, lower it back down. Retuck those toes. The hands are in our position with the elbows facing back. Inhale, exhale. Coming back to our child's pose. One breath here. Inhale, exhale. In, and then we're pushing, exhaling. We're back to our downward dog. Pedal the feet. And let's lift the right leg. And this time, maybe we're kicking something. Maybe you're doing a fancy football kick. So we're going high this time. And to bring the leg towards straight, we send the heel away. We don't squish the knee. Exhale, bend that knee. Draw it under the body towards the nose. Maybe you kiss it. Inhale the leg back up. Exhale, bend the knee again. This time we're stepping it through to a small lunge. Get the leg as far through as you can smoothly. If it only comes halfway, use a hand to help it along. Drop the back knee. The body's nice and long here. The toes are tucked. Inhale, push off the back toe, and we're coming up to find a little lunge here. What's happening with the tummy? Well, the hips square to the front of the mat, toes working really hard, belly drawing in, crown of head going up. Hold. Feet are working really hard, squeeze the glutes. Exhale, soften, fingers to the mat. Step that foot back. Palm down, lift into child's pose. Take a big breath in. Big floppy horse breath out. And we're inhaling the left leg hard. Kicking away through the heel. Inhale, exhale. Bring that knee under the body. Maybe give it a little kiss. Inhale it back and high. Exhale, our lunge on the other side, left leg forward, slow lunge. Step it through, back heel down, back knee down. I should have said, if the knee is uncomfortable, we pad the knee in our low lunge, we fold over the mat, and we bring in a blanket or a cushion to pad the knee. When you're ready, inhaling and starting from the toes, inhale, you're opening, and you're strong throughout as you open, the tummy's in, spine is long, you could be ready to launch. But we're not going to do that. But imagine that level of engagement through the body. Exhale, soften. This time we're coming forwards. Pick that back knee up. Step it through. Belly to thighs pose. Flop, 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 flop. When you're ready, we're rolling up. The bum goes down first. Head's heavy. Inhale, so floppy like a zombie, <sighs> arms up, yes, I'm alive. Exhale, the hands to the heart. Okay, so this is only a little one, this is a little yummy morning one, so we're going to wrap this up pretty quickly. So we'll take one more sun salutation, softening the knees, inhale those hands up, exhale, dive forwards, hands to the ground. Inhale, lift up halfway. Exhale, we'll step the right foot back and we'll come to our low lunge. Inhale, the hands up. Maybe look up towards the fingers. Exhale, the hands down. And we're going to step the left foot back to our child's pose, bum to the heels. Inhale, forwards to plank. One breath in plank. See if you can raise the spine between the shoulder blades, coming light on the toes. Tommy working hard. Exhale. Drop the knees. Bend the elbows. Lower to the mat. 
slide the elbows forwards under the shoulders, root the tops of the feet into the ground, inhale, Sphinx pose, We're opening up. So untuck the toes and push the tops of the feet into the ground to energize through the belly. Open the heart, open the heart, less chin, more heart. Lovely, roll the spine back down. Plant the hands, tuck the toes, inhale, either to child's pose or up into your plank. And then we're coming back to our downward dog. Wiggle the hips. And then we're inhaling right leg, nice and high. Exhale, bend the knee, bring the right knee towards the right elbow. Inhale it up. Bring the right knee towards the nose. Inhale it up. This time we're stepping through. Exhale, step the right foot through, drop the left knee down, strong back toes, inhale it up, low crescent lunge. Exhale the hands back to the mat, and we're stepping forward. One big breath out. Oh. Inhaling up, ready for the last side. Exhale the hands to the heart center. Out to the side, palms forwards, eyes closed, Tadasana, mountain pose, or standing home in our yoga sequence. Roll the shoulders back. Inhale. Exhale. Fold it down. Inhale to halfway lift. This time we're stepping the left foot back, dropping the knee, inhaling, low crescent. Exhale, hands down, stepping it back to our plank. Right foot goes back. Lift between the shoulder blades, strong hands, strong tummy. Exhale, drop the knees. Elbows come back towards the hips as we lower down with control. Sliding forwards. Inhale into a small cobra. So keep the hands in place and inhale there. Maybe you push into the hands, push into the tops of the feet and rise up. If the back complains, we come back. Exhale, roll it back down, tuck the toes, and again, we're either going to our child's pose or we're doing a push-up here. You choose. Coming back to meet in downward dog. Pedal those feet one last time. Inhale up, left leg, kicking it back. Exhale, left knee towards the left elbow. Inhale it up. Exhale, left knee to the nose. Inhale it up. And now we're coming through to our low lunge. Exhaling, drawing the knee under the body, gently unfurling the foot, right knee down, right toes strong. Inhale, low crescent lunge, left foot forwards. Exhale, hands down to the mat. We're stepping back to child's pose. Untuck the toes. Drape the buttocks over the heels as we come down towards the mat. As soon as we start to feel the bum getting light on the heels, stack the fists or use a prop. Wait till the back relaxes and slowly in stages get the head down, but leaving the bottom resting on the heels. See if you can breathe into your back, opening the ribs and not letting the tummy fill up and lift you up your legs. So you can draw the tummy in, even as we breathe into the legs. And if that starts to make you feel weird, let it go. Let it go. And next inhale, gently lifting up. And we're coming to lie on the back, winding up once it's down for this morning. So come to lie on your back. And soles of the feet on the floor. I think we should always do one or two bridges in a practice. It's such a great compound exercise. So my shins are broadly upright. Maybe I can brush the heel with the fingertips, 
It's usually a fairly good yardstick. My hands are backs of the hands down. And again, it's all about the engaged points of contact with the earth. So my feet feel like they're sliding away, like they're sliding under a rug. My shoulders are pushing down to the mat. So as I try to slide backwards by pushing my feet away, the only thing that can happen is my hips raise. As I come up, I keep checking in. Has my tummy gone? Have I sagged into the back? Really uh, keep the knees driving over the toes. The toes trying to slide under this rug. Inner thighs are working. And we can find this bridge out over taxing the lower back, and that's what we want. Maybe the uh, elbows go down and the fingers go up, and we can use the pressure of the elbow into the mat to lift the hips a bit more. But did it tweak the lower back? If it did, come down a centimetre, push the hips up, and then go again. Keep the breath really, really yummy. Full deep breaths. Opening the heart a little more now, maybe pushing the feet away a little more firmly. And we're going to come down, we're going to come down like we're laying out like pasta dough, like something really fragile. So we can slowly, gently roll the spine down as we exhale. As each vertebra comes down, we try to release the front of the body as well. So just roll down, softening the upper torso, softening the tummy. The last couple of vertebrae are done, softening in the core and the pubic region. We're so soft now on the mat. And our last movement will be a supine twist, a twist lying down. And uh, my guidance with this is to keep, if we're twisting to our right, we want to keep our shoulders on the mat and we want to bring the left hip bone as far over to the right as we can. So your legs might be knees together, one leg might be stretched out, the legs could be crossed over. Um, have a feel into your body. But we want to feel like eventually the left hip could be stacked over the right hip while the shoulders stay super relaxed. Breathe into your twist. And then we're going to come over to the other side. So gently, 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 gently. Inhaling that left hip back over. Rolling across the pelvis. You might need to scooch the hips a little bit to the right. And we're rolling over. And we're keeping those shoulders nice and heavy as the right hip bone moves towards being above the left hip point. Supine twist going to the left. Shoulders are melting into the mat. Check your jaw is intense. See if you can let go of any tension around the jaw or maybe around the eyes or forehead. And maybe around the legs. I just noticed that my feet were a little bit active there. Maybe there's some unnecessary tension at the extremities, at the hands or feet, and you could make the limbs heavier. This is a totally passive stretch here, so we don't want any engagement. We want our body to release into gravity. And when you're ready, inhale the hips back to flat, and the knees pointing up, and we'll take two, three minutes of Shavasana together. So your legs might stretch out long and away from you and their feet roll out to the sides. Or you might know that that's not very comfortable for you. And you might keep the knees bent. Or you might get your cushions or pillows under your knees. You could even take your shavasana seated on the tummy or with your legs up the wall. So just spending 30 seconds now to get comfy and then we'll lie for two minutes rest. Ah, maybe a nice sigh wants to come out. Incredibly therapeutic thing is a sigh. 
definitely recommend doing more. Hopefully you're now comfy and coming towards stillness. And the eyes soften and close if they haven't already. And just like we did a moment ago in our twist, seeing if the arms could feel 10% heavier, seeing if the legs could feel 15% heavier. This is uh, habitually so many muscles activated that don't need to be activated. One of our yogic practices is learning to switch them off. If the mind is wandering away, try to bring it back to the breath. And now let's take in a bigger breath. Fill up the body, fill up the body, fill up the body till you're bursting. And then we'll lay it all out. And let's do that again. This time stretch the fingers and the toes away from each other, full of air, full of air, full. Flop. Flop it out. See if maybe the corners of the mouth would gently turn up. Then very, very gently, rolling onto one side, maybe the arm creates a pillow for the head. And we slowly make our way up to sit together at the front of the mat. Again, we might reach for our block here, make sure we're really, really comfy. Mm. Noticing any changes that have arisen in the body through the practice. Maybe if there's any nice glow or feeling of positivity, we try to squirrel that away in our back pocket to use later today. Growing tall with the inhale, circle hands above head. Exhale, hands to the forehead, to the lips, to the heart in these simple ancient gestures. We'll take one moment to just think of something we're grateful for wherever or whenever you're listening to my voice. Fixing that thing in your mind, gently bowing. Gratitude for the yoga, for yourself, for your community. Namaste. Uh, I had to change gear a little bit for you then. I was keeping it like so beginners, it was silly. Uh, <laughs> That's cool, you know. Um, yeah, I'd like to see you at a Thursday one though, Amy. Like, uh, you know, you've been at it a few years. Yes, yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, it's Thursday. Thursday's the one. Those are the one. Okay, but thank you for joining, though. Appreciate that. Take care. Bye-bye.